Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of T-Dog RC and this episode is all about setting up a free sky redundancy system. So we've got the master receiver and the slave receiver and the idea being that anything happens to the signal on this then this one will take over. So if that's something you're interested in uh, taking a look at then this video is hopefully going to help you out with setting that up. Before we get stuck in, if this is the first time you've found the channel and you're into all things RC planes, um, fixed wing RC, RC tech, FPV, bolts and nitro, EDFs, the whole lot, then this channel is going to be one that you're going to want to click the subscribe button. So let's get stuck in. Okay, so following on from the intro there, um, if you've been watching some other videos on my channel, you'll know that I've been building a VQ Models PC6 um, porter, which is, um, it's got a 120 four-stroke engine in it. Um, it's gonna be nitro powered. And I've got quite a lot of money, really, when you think about it, invested into this model. So it's probably, um, probably got at least 500 pounds invested when you take into account the cost of the actual model the engine, the radio gear, the servos, all that sort of stuff, you know, it does soon mount up. Um, and one of the things I wanted to do with this model was make sure that I've got at least some sort of redundancy around the uh, radio gear. So I'm a um, Open TX Free Sky Radio Master user. Um, so I wanted to have a look at the Free Sky redundancy system. And what that involves is you have your master receiver so this is a FreeSky RX8R um, all the servos will plug into this receiver and the power will, will go into this receiver and then using the SBUS protocol I then have got a secondary receiver which is a uh, this one's a RXSR which is just one of the little nano receivers uh, and I'll configure this in such a way that if the signal drops on the primary receiver then this one will take over um, and I'll still be able to control the model basically. So it's quite a nice system without having any uh, extra sort of bits of kit in the model like a, you know, like a redundancy bus type system. The only thing it doesn't protect you against is power failure. So if, if, the, if the main battery pack goes, then unfortunately uh, it is lights out, but it does at least protect you from radio uh, signal loss, uh, which is one of the most common things um, that you, you know, if, it, if it's gonna fail, it's usually around the signal, assuming that you've checked that your battery's got the right level of power before you take off. Um, so what I've got to do is we've got to get this set up on the radio and get this bound. Um, we've got to do the same with this one. I've got a little bit of soldering to do on this um, to get the um, servo connector hooked up to it. Um, so I can basically plug it into this one. So this is gonna take you right through from getting these out of the box, um, getting them connected, and then through to programming the radio um, and, and getting it all set up. So I'll get the camera up onto the bench and uh, we'll get stuck in. Okay, so first things first, um, it's pretty cold tonight in the UK. It's minus one outside. So uh, apologies for the noise in the background. That's my workshop diesel air heater that I've got. Um, and you can hear the pub ticking away. I hope it's not too annoying. I don't exactly know how it's going to be on the camera until I get this back to my computer and, and listen back to it. So uh, apologies if it is um, a little bit annoying, but it is freezing. So there we are. Um, so what we're going to be doing here is we want to connect. This is going to be my primary radio and all the servos are going to be plugged into here. But then as backup, and the power is also going to be plugged into here as backup, We've got this little uh, FreeSky uh, RXSR receiver, which we, we're going to be using as a, um, a redundancy receiver, basically. So if for some reason this loses signal, um, this one will take over. That's the theory anyway. So first things first, we actually, we can sort of put this one to one side for a minute because we need to get this one set up uh, and bound first of all. So if we just uh, get this open, and have a look. So obviously tiny little receiver which is great. Um, we have got a, a, a servo connector there which is which is perfect. 
and basically that just plugs into there like so. Uh, I do just need to check because the last time I set one of these up I had to move this yellow pin across because uh, I think out the box that isn't actually in the um, S port, S bus sorry, um, I think it's in the uh, S port or F port so we might just need to move that so I'll check the instructions in a second just to confirm but essentially that's all we do with that obviously then we've got to power that up and bind it so what I'm going to do is I am just going to check this uh, cable here just to make sure that's in the right place. So bear me one second and I'll be back. Yep. So as I suspected, hopefully you can see that okay. And this can catch you out. It caught me out the first time I used one of these receivers is you've got ground uh, and your five voltage, which is fine. Um, and then you've got S port, which is how it is configured by default, but you don't want that. Uh, you need S bus out and uh, in most configurations I would have said you need S bus out so you have to move the pin across so basically what we've got to do is we've got to lift this up here and you need to use a, a sort of a sharp knife like this so just gently lift that up like that oops And then that should allow us to pull the yellow lead out, all being well. There we go. And then we basically just want to move it into the next hole along, which is going to be this one. So we push that back in and it should, all being well, click into place. And it does. And that's nice and secure now. It's got a little uh, tang on it which sticks up and it uh, kind of clips into place. Um, so that's obviously a fairly easy process, but if you don't know to do that, you might be trying to get it, um, you, you'll get it bound up, but you'll, you won't be able to control any surveys or anything with it, um, because it's not sending an S bus out signal unless you move that cable along. So that's that sorted. So next thing we've got to do, we can discard these leads, we don't really need those, that's more if you were setting up a flight controller or something. So next job is we need to get it bound. Um, so we've got the little bind button here which we need to hold down um, and then power it up. So what I use for these sometimes is my servo tester because you've got a plug on both ends obviously so that works quite well. So we get that connected there. Actually, before I do that, I just need to get the radio switched on. Okay, so we just need to get it bound up. So I'm going to press this, which is tricky when you've only, you could do with an extra pair of hands. Okay, but that should be in bind mode now because you've got the red and the green light. And then we're going to bind it channel 1 to 8 with telemetry off. Okay, that's bound. So we can unplug this. Wait for that to finish and then power it back on. We should hopefully get a green light we have. So, we've got the green light there, so that's bound, so that's great. So that's that set up. Then what we need to do... Telemetry lost. Don't understand why it says that, because I bound it with tele telemetry off, but it still does seem to say that. Um, so next we need to get this one out. And we just basically need to get this one bound up. So same procedure as before. We just power this on whilst we're holding the um, failsafe 
down. It's a little bit easier because it's just a bit of a bigger device. So we'll press that down. We'll connect this up, making sure we've got this the right way around, which we have. Okay, so we've got the green and the red light and we're just gonna bind it using the same receiver number. We'll bind channel one to eight telemetry on. And that's bound up there. Got the red flashing light, which is good. So we'll power that off. Then we'll power it back on. So we've got a green light there, so we know that that is working. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to get our redundancy receiver and we need to plug it into the S bus in port of our master receiver, which is this one at the bottom here. So making sure you've got the, it does tell you along the top, negatives to the, uh, my left hand side. So plug it in like this. And there you can see that we've got two green lights indicating that both these receivers are bound up to this one model on the same receiver number, which uh, suggests that it's working basically. Now the only thing is, it's not that easy to test because um, obviously if you unplug the power from the primary receiver, that one stops working. So the only way you can really sort of properly test it is you have to, and I've seen someone do this on YouTube, but unfortunately I'm not gonna do this today, but you have to sort of put this in a, in a, um, a case that uh, is, so it struggles to transmit. I actually saw someone put it in like a carbon case so it was unable to uh, transmit through the carbon case uh, and it proves that this was still working. Um, oh, it's probably a bit close there. Um, because the servos carried on moving, etc., through the redundancy receiver. But you can see there that we've got two green lights. So that does say that it's working in terms, as far as the system's concerned. So that pretty much wraps this video up. Um, hopefully you found that useful. Um, so what you can do now obviously with this redundancy receiver is um, if you want to you can extend this lead which I think I, I might well do um, probably just with an extension plug. Make sure obviously it's, it's a nice uh, connection to the extension plug but then you could put this somewhere in a different position in the model so somewhere different to this primary receiver. Um, so that's, that's what I'm going to do just to give me that extra level of, uh, of coverage. So hopefully you found that useful. This is probably a pretty common setup using the RX8R and one of these little RSXR receivers. Um, it's the ideal solution really. Obviously you could use two of these if you really wanted, but it's a bit of a waste of a receiver like this. You may as well just use one of these little ones because all you need is the S plus out feature. Um, so that works perfectly well. Um, as always, thanks a lot for watching. If you've got any questions, stick them down in the comments field. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Also, please make sure that you subscribe if you're into RC tech like this, fixed wing RC, nitro engines, EDFs, bolts, uh, foam, the whole lot, then you wanna subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot for everyone who has subscribed and I will see you soon for the next one.